All right, thank you, Daniel. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right, good morning, brothers and sisters. Yes, good to see you all today. Uh, yes, and uh, welcome again, uh, Joshua's family. Yeah, welcome to Adelaide, Australia. Hi, the translations there. It's good. <laughs> all right, so today's uh, topic is just a continuation of. Uh, my series on 12 points that show Christianity is true, a handbook on defending the Christian faith. And just to remind ourselves, you know, why are we even interested or studying about this topic about defending the faith? Because truth is under attack, right? Whether we like it or not, it's happening. And we are more living in the postmodern kind of world. And postmodernism claims there is no absolute truth. And the way people perceive the world is subjective. So when you hear more and more people saying claims like this, what is true for you is true for you, and what is true for me is true for me. Everything has become subjective. So just to test your memory, the 12 points that show Christianity is true. Can anyone tell me what the blank is? Truth about reality is? Knowable. Okay, so yes, proof about reality is knowable. And to the recap, there is a reality and we can know it. I know that I exist. I know the world exists outside me. I know others exist. I know the law of logics are true. I know we can know many things. Now it's interesting after the, the first part of this series uh, was uploaded on Facebook. There was a, quite a lot of comments um, that was in, in, in on the video. And obviously it struck a chord with someone. And uh, in one of the comments, it mentioned, you know, that at this point, like we can't use scripture in justifying uh, truth. Uh, and, and that's, I guess, the whole point of this series is we haven't even touched about God or Christianity yet. Here is some sort of pre-evangelism before you actually tell people about the gospel. What are the principles we need to clear before we get to that? And so it is true that we, we need to set some grounds before we even can have a reasonable discussion about God. So the first point of truth about reality is knowable. And the second one is Today, we're going to talk about opposite cannot both be true. It sounds very basic, but we have to uh, understand it completely. So why, we, why is that important? Because we want to answer the question, are all religions true? Is there only one way? Because in today's postmodern world, if there's only one way, that sounds incredibly narrow. Okay, and it's it's uh, supporting religious pluralism. So religious pluralism generally refers to the belief in two or more religious worldviews as being equally valid or acceptable. More than mere tolerance, religious pluralism accepts multiple paths to God. You heard the saying, "All roads leads to heaven." Okay, all the sincere will be safe. All major roads leads to heaven. One of the American singer and songwriter quote this, may the God of your choice bless you. And this is not only he thinking that, but a lot of our friends, neighbors, schools, in workplace, whatever floats your boat, you know, that's the same. Are all religion true? Well, the short answer is no, because of this. 
the opposite of true is false. Right? Sounds very, very straightforward. But why opposites can't be true? And that's because of this law called the law of non-contradiction. And I'll just play a short video about this. In ancient Greece, Aristotle established the principle of non-contradiction, cornerstone of logic. This principle asserts that contradictory statements. Sorry, it's uh, it's soft. Can you guys hear? It's loud. It's loud. Okay, cool. Sorry. I will stop feeling around. Cannot both be true simultaneously. For example. Statement it is raining and it is not raining cannot both be true at the same time in the same place. And Aristotle argued that without this principle, meaningful discourse and rational thinking would be impossible. This idea underpins all logical systems, helping us navigate everyday decisions and complex problems. Imagine trying to solve a puzzle if the pieces could both fit and not fit at the same time. The principle of non-contradiction ensures clarity and consistency in our reason. Today, it remains a fundamental concept in philosophy, mathematics, and computer science, guiding us in the pursuit of knowledge and truth. Okay. I'll just share one more video. Now, this is very many back on me, and the doctor is on my wife and I are there. And you heard a rumor that she was pregnant. So you walked up to us and you said, Hey, you guys, this, and you guys are expected. Now, what would you think if at the exact same time she said yes and I said no? Maybe she hasn't told me yet. Maybe you're not ready to start telling me that. That was everything, even for one moment. That we were both telling the truth. Because you know that she cannot be both pregnant and not pregnant at the same <laughs> time. That's called the law of non contradiction. Two opposite things cannot both be true at the same time in the same sense. That's just the way the world works. And it means that if Christianity is true, then anything that contradicts it is false. So make sure you try to see if we can walk you through step by topic by step. Okay, so the opposite of true is false, law and non-contradiction. Opposite idea cannot both be true at the same time in the same sense. The earth is round versus the earth is not round. They can't be together true at the same time. It is undeniable, for it cannot be denied without being affirmed. The one who claims contradiction can be both be true does not believe that that contradiction of that statement can also be true. Or opposite can both be true does not believe that opposite of that statement can also be true. So like I say, a shapes, all triangles are three-sided figures. All circles are round. Like uh, a circle cannot be round and not round at the same time. And one more example, there's Abin Sina, an Islamic philosopher, who quote this, anyone who denies the law of non-contradiction -contrad should be beaten and burned until he admits that to be beaten is not the same as not to be beaten, <laughs> and to be burned is not the same as not to be burned. I mean, it's a bit extreme, yeah. but, but I think the point is there. There is a difference, right? So if it's true that God exists, then it is false that God does not exist. If theism is true, then atheism is false. They can't together be both be true at the same time. Opposite of true is false. So opposite views cannot be true. Right? Since different religions hold different views about God, creation, human beings, 
Christ and salvation, it follows that opposing views that various religions cannot both be true. So just for example, topic of life after death. Theist versus atheism. Obviously, an atheist doesn't believe life after death. So they can't be true at the same time. The topic of reincarnation, some religion thinks you will come back in the next life, whereas other religion say, no, this is one life you get, and after that, heaven or hell. It's totally opposite. Some religion says there's one God, and some has more than one God. Again, can't be true to, at the same time. Some say God is infinite, and some say God is finite. <coughs> Again, it can't be true at the same time. So law not on contradiction destroys the common belief in religious pluralism. Opposite religious views cannot both be true. So, is there really only one way? Could one religion could be true? So, let's take a look at this. All views can't be false. Right? They are opposite views and both can't be false. So, one is true. For example, 2 plus 2 equals something. Right? There's an answer to that. We know the answer is 4. So any other answers, like 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, the answers are wrong. Nothing is true, that claims to be true. So if someone says nothing is true, that person is claiming that their statement is true. So it contradicts itself. Nothing is true means nothing is real, which is self-defeating. So at least one way must be true. The true view corresponds to reality. And I feel pers like personally, after studying all the many religions, I think Christianity is the one that corresponds to reality the most. And that's why it makes sense. So the objection we always get is, is this a narrow view, having only one way? But the answer is, all truth is narrow. Truth excludes everything that opposes it. So in, if pluralism is true, it's narrow. It excludes all non-pluralism. If atheism is true, it excludes all non-atheistic view. Skepticism, similar things. And this is an important point. Narrow does not mean narrow-minded. One should be open-minded to the truth, which is its nature is narrow. So truth itself is by itself narrow. So one example that comes to mind is the examination. I'm sure you, if you go to school, you have done multiple choice questions. You have uh, one question with four different options, A, B, C, D. And you got to put down the correct answer. Now, I'm not sure you've done it before, but I've done it where I have two answers that it's very similar. I can't decide. It's A and B. They look really similar. And I just put both answers down. I circled A and B. What do you think the teacher would do to my question? Wrong. Okay. Wrong. Yes. But one of that is right. The answer could be A. I just put down two answers because I think you know, they're very similar. See, in reality, is there's only one correct answer. And to say all the answers are true at the same time, it doesn't really correspond to reality. Right? Um, and so, if you say, you know, the truth is narrow, yes, it is narrow. Like, there's only one correct answer in the examination. So other religions could tr be true on various things. So it's not to say there's no good things within other religion, right? Many religions believe in some form of golden rule, right? Treat others the way you want to be treated. There's wisdom in that, and there's a truth in that. And some, all religions sort of 
say that you're gonna treat each other well in, in a kind, loving manner. However, the key matters like God's nature, creation, life after death, they differ. It's like night and day. Right? So even though if this MCQ question, multiple choice question, the hardest questions are the ones that have all the answers that are very similar. Okay? A, B, C, and D, they look really much the same. But there's only one correct answer. And it's those subtle differences that um, makes it whether that's a truth or not true. So I just want to uh, finish up with some scripture regarding God and logic and reason. In Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, it reads, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your skin as as scarlet, they will be white as snow. Though they are like red, like crimson, they will be like wool. And just highlight the point, the Lord is asking us to reason together. God is a God of logic and of reason. He encourages us to reason. And similarly, in Jesus' life, even when he's a young boy, in chapter, Luke chapter 2, he reads, Now so it was that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. See, Jesus, in his life on earth, goes to the synagogue and reasons with uh, the people that asking questions, there will be many back and forth, try to reason. And similarly in Paul's, uh, in Acts, Acts chapter 17, now the Berians were of more noble character than the Thessalonians, for they received the message with great eagerness at, and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. See, that have, the word here is examine. They actually check, check it out. So Paul says one thing. They take what he said and they check it out with the scriptures. They examine the scriptures every day to see whether it matches up. See, what they're trying to do is see whether what Paul says matches up to reality, matches up to the facts. And again, Paul always say uh, reason with people. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and God-fearing Gentiles and in the marketplace with those he meet each day. So that's a good example for us to actually emulate. Wherever we go, we are trying to reason with people. Obviously, the Bible tells us to speak the truth, but with gentleness and respect. So in summary, <laughs> truth is what corresponds to reality. Even the denial of this claim is corresponding to reality. We cannot deny that we know reality without knowing something about it. <laughs> Opposite of true is false. All views cannot be true at the same time. Neither can all views be false at the same time. For at least one view of the two opposites must be true. For example, if either God exists or he does not. Right? If it's false that God does not exist, then it must be true that he does exist. It is possible that one religion is true in all its essential claim. So that if anything in any other religion that is opposed to essential, essential truths would be false. So next time, we will take a look at the third point. And this will be the one of the most important points in these 12 steps, is that the theist, a theistic God exists. Now that we know truth of reality is knowable, that we can know it, and opposite cannot be both true. Now we have the grounds to ever talk about whether a theistic God exists. So thank you for your attention. I will pass it back to Hope.